It's a bear. Man, that coin got that one wrong today. <laughs> hey, good afternoon. What's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Got the uh, live Viva the Keys cam up, and you know what? I think they're on to us, people. <laughs> Take a look. I think they've noticed we're here. Who's watching who? Uh, really cool camera if you haven't seen it, and I do put it up quite frequently, especially when the water conditions around here are a little rough. And you know what that probably was? That was a predator charging into their group right there. That's probably why they're all hugging each other. That's why things, people school, man. It's all about fear, you know, and, and uh, following the crowd. When people are fearful, they follow the crowd. Well, uh, and you can see that in fires. When there's a fire in the building, where does everybody go? Where the crowd goes. So here's the crowd right here. Look at them teeth on them suckers, too. I guess uh, uh, they're not just being preyed on. They're predators as well. Isn't that the truth about everything in life here? Let me, uh, there's a lot, of <laughs> a lot of similarities between uh, nature and us. Well, what am I saying? We are part of nature. Let's uh, take a look at prices today. And before I get there, um, here's kind of my uh, theme for the, not theme for the day, here's my quote for the day. And it's really not a quote, it's part of the song. Uh, there's battle lines being drawn and nobody's right if everybody's wrong. And that's Buffalo Springfield. Most of all of you know that, especially the old timers like myself. And, uh, and uh, the, gosh, it's so true now. It's so true. Uh, nobody's right if everybody's wrong. And, and uh, uh, well, anyways, let's get into uh, what the uh, markets are doing. And before I do that again, gosh, a little surprise here for you today. Typically, I say the newsy parts for later or, you know, what Ted Butler says. And again, Ted Butler, I subscribe to his service. If you're in the industry, you certainly need to subscribe to his service. He's one of the smartest guys out there when it talks about uh, the manipulation of uh, uh, silver by the uh, big commercial shorts. Uh, and I, his commentary is really excellent as well. Makes you a smarter person, in my opinion, if you read Ted Butler. Uh, for those of you that don't, uh, aren't in the business, can't justify spending the uh, subscription fee that he has. He's got a lot of stuff out there you can read for free. If you just go take a look online, just type in Ted Butler, silver manipulation, or just put, type in Ted Butler silver, and you'll come up with all kinds of tasty stuff. Um, one of the things that M Mr. Butler was mentioning earlier in the week, uh, or, or, or today, uh, is something that we mentioned earlier in the week that I've been mentioning for a while, is that uh, uh, I believe for the longest time is that the tail's been wagging the dog, and the tail is the paper market in silver and gold, you can say, and the, uh, particularly in silver, folks. Uh, I'm going to kind of focus on silver right now. Uh, don't forget, though, where gold goes, silver will follow, and gold is moving upwards no matter how you slice it and dice it, silver will follow it. Uh, but one of the problems with silver is it's, it's been so manipulated that every other market and every other commodity out there is starting to rise up dramatically except for silver. Odd, isn't it? Um, and, and we've talked so much about the investment end of silver, you know, people buying silver for investment, 100 ounce bars, silver, you know, silver investors and ETFs and that, that we forget about the manufacturing side of it, or at least I have. And I have, I just, I forget to discuss that part of the physical draining of silver, all right? So we've got a huge, We've got a huge deficit. There is a shortage of silver. D despite what some people say or think, it's an uneducated opinion to say otherwise, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, it, we do definitely have a shortage of silver out there. And uh, it's showing up in the investment, smaller investment, retail oriented uh, uh, products like one ounce bars, 10 ounce bars, sovereign products, silver eagles, maple leaves. There's a big shortage out there, folks. And one of the things I didn't think about is that silver does have very large industrial uses as, as well. Think about the industries that use silver. Now, when the price starts to go up dramatically, that's not going to help them. Um, but even worse than prices going up dramatically, because they're going to pass that cost along to consumers, worse is if you can't find silver for your manufacturing. And I'm going to read this here right quick. And it's, wow, what a great statement by Mr. Butler, the reason you want to subscribe to a service. Uh, here, it's one thing for investors to face delays in receiving order silver supplies, investors like us. Listen, if you can't get it and you, you know a trusted dealer, we do a lot of prepays and pre-orders here in our store. If we don't have stuff and it's delayed, we'll order it for customers and when it comes in, we, we give it to them. 
And again, you can do that with trusted companies. You know, there is a little uh, 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 party risk here, you know, because you're, you're, you are dealing with, no matter how trusted someone is, even myself. You know, what if a meteorite landed on my store with your silver and all my employees? <laughs> that would be tough to get back. Uh, maybe not. You got receipts. There's an estate and everything like that. But you get my point here. No matter how much you trust someone, you still have uh, some risks that you have to deal with. Uh, but we do pre-order. If someone wants to have silver right now in large quantities in certain products, we would have to pre-order it right now as long as, as well as everyone else does if you want to get it at a reasonable level. And uh, uh, so again, Ted Butler points out there's one thing for investors to face delays in receiving orders, silver supplies, as is currently the case, and which is mostly an inconvenience, although more than that should go the dealer go under the in more of an inconvenience, although more than that, should the dealer go under in the interim? Oh, Ted Butler points that as well. If you're pre-ordered from a certain dealer and they go under, you're screwed. But, you know, this is the importance of you can't shield yourself from that risk entirely because we all have bank accounts and we all risk that the bank may go under or, you know, even giving the money to grandma. What if grandma's house gets hit by a meteorite and grandma goes up with your stuff? So, I mean, there's always that risk. What if you're not home and your home gets, but always that risk, folks. But um, um, it, it's mostly an inconvenience to investors to have to wait, as Ted P Butler put out. But, but, and here's the, the big but, uh, but another thing altogether, when the industrial uses are deprived of the needed silver supplies. Folks, very astute comment right here, something I haven't thought about in the last month or so. I have mentioned in the past that there's a lot. We have mentioned in the past, but with current things going on with such a high demand in the investment world, I forgot that the industrial world is involved as well, as well with this. And this makes a lot of sense because the industrial people are, aren't going to care about uh, uh, price point. They're going to pass it along to consumers. What they are going to care about is having the supply, and this is an issue. I'm going to go on here. Uh, again, I'll read this again. But another thing altogether, when the industrial uses are deprived of needed silver supplies, such a failure to receive timely silver su deliveries could result in the complete shutdown of operations. Or as Izzy always said, that Izzy's a friend of Ted's, and again, you'll get to know that when you subscribe to a service. Or as Izzy always said, sending their employees home. And as when the silver shortages and delays reach the industrial users, unlike investors forced to wait, the users just can't wait. Industrial users can't wait. Ted Butler nailed this. He absolutely just kind of flew over my head. I haven't been thinking about this, but he's absolutely right. Instead, they would aggressively seek to buy extra physical silver to keep their assembly lines running and to head off future delays and keep their employees working. I kind of think that's exactly what we're seeing right now, is there's probably industrial uh, buyers out there competing with investors. The investors don't mind waiting, but the industrial buyers are going to bid up that price of silver to make sure they have it on hand so they don't have to close up, so they don't have to lay off employees, so they don't go bankrupt because they don't have the, the stuff they need to manufacture whatever it is they make. Uh, so wonderful, wonderful point by Ted Butler. Wanted to bring this up first because one, some, some folks have short attention spans. <laughs> they may not make it through my whole video, and I can't blame them as well sometimes because I have a short attention span as well, except when it comes to talking. Look at markets today. Man, I, boy, I, I suspected like an abused child that we were going to get smacked in the back of the head for no reason. Well, we know the reason, but we were going to get smacked in the back of the head by the manipulators on the, on the uh, CME markets. Uh, whatever markets, uh, uh, and no, not yet. I mean, we still got tomorrow, Friday, and Sunday night, but man, oh man, take a look at these markets. Uh, I was wrong. I really expected a beatdown by tomorrow, but like I said, we're not at tomorrow yet. However, um, whew, wow, take a look at this. Nine, I'm even surprised, all right? Uh, 1938. Uh, well, hold on. I am surprised, but maybe I shouldn't be because as I spoke of yesterday, I have been watching a shortage of silver out there uh, and this I think silver is making the bigger moves and, and, and going to make the biggest move compared to gold uh, but uh, I've been watching the supplies out there and the supplies are dwindling in silver and I think that's why we're seeing the uh, silver strength we have and we haven't seen that smack down to $23 um, and I hate to use the word yet it's possible still yet but wow I'm really surprised I thought it would be uh, uh, today or tomorrow that we'd start to see the uh, uh, monkey hammer and commence <laughs> Uh, let's look at the ranges on gold, 1938 to 1965-93, currently sitting at 1964. Silver, uh, 2499 and uh, uh, the high of 2587. Uh, sit, almost hit that $26 mark. We're currently sitting at 2570. We'll look at the 24-hour charts here very shortly. 
And uh, platinum, uh, platinum, gee, just not performing as well as I expected it to be. Look at that, 1,028 percentage wise. Um, however, you know, again, think about this. Platinum is used, uh, has industrial uses. Silver has industrial uses too, but silver's been monkey hammered so low. Um, and uh, again, gosh, tough to say why platinum is low. That metal confounds me. Palladium confounds me as well. Uh, but uh, boy, pl platinum seems like the cheapest of the three metals right now. Well, they're all cheap in my opinion, but uh, uh, platinum just doesn't seem like it's got the, uh, the boot upwards uh, like the other two metals have. And uh, look at that, 1011 So, I mean, almost nearing that $900 mark again. I love platinum at this level. I still think it's pretty cheap. But again, as I said, I think all these metals are cheap. And I understand gold and silver much better uh, to be able to talk about it. Let's take a look at the charts here. I'm going to do a quick sip of coffee here and put my on-hold music on. Ready? <laughs> didn't work, did it? I was trying to, trying, trying to hum you a song while I'm sipping my coffee. <laughs> so you didn't have dead space. That's what they call that when, you, when you're quiet uh, on TV or something. They call it dead space. Um, Hmm. All right, one more sip of dead space there. 24-hour uh, spot bid, here we are right now, and it looks like uh, really the uh, increase started early before the NYMEX opened. There's a NYMEX market opening there right at the peak, and actually there's a monkey hammer downwards when New York market started. Boom, and then uh, uh, slingshotting back up. Silver's just showing some really amazing strength. Maybe the uh, uh, maybe the commercial shorts are truly in trouble this time, the big short positions. Uh, maybe the longs, maybe they just didn't, uh, uh, um, <laughs> maybe, maybe it's just things are changing. I don't know. I, it, it's hard to explain, but I think we could be seeing some much higher prices here uh, considering every, you know, the global world events going on right now. Uh, let's take a look at silver. Same thing here. Look at that. Uh, New York opens right here. A slight monkey hammering in silver, but not really. Silver just shot right through the roof past that 2580 mark. So, I mean, I'm confounded. I really am. And I follow these markets on a daily basis for the last, I can't tell you how many years. Um, and usually I'm pretty good at reading where things are going, but uh, we're in a very strange time. There's, uh, there's something happening here. What it is, isn't exactly clear. <laughs> Had to go back to that song. And at least clear to me, if you got any thoughts on this, put it in the comment section below. Let's take a look at the uh, equities markets. And uh, interestingly enough, I have said that I believe that the plunge protection team, the presidential working group, uh, which, is a, which is the president's uh, administration, you know, his close people, the Treasury Department, and the uh, Federal Reserve, they get together in secret. This is true. You know, just look up the uh, plunge protection team. You can find out yourself. Uh, and I believe that they're getting together in secret like they do anyways and that they're, they're preventing the stock, the Dow Jones, the S&P, and the NASDAQ from collapsing. I sincerely believe that and there may be some truth that they're trying to suppress the price of gold and precious metals as well because we need cheap commodities in order to maintain our economy. We also need a, a good a rising Dow Jones, S&P, and NASDAQ to maintain the economy the way they've been maintaining it, which is really just theft, but uh, uh, I digress. There's your first drink of the day. I don't even know if we did an M word yet, did we? I don't think so. So, and uh, anyways, I believe that this market, and what's strange is here we go. I'm gonna just skip right over to it. Uh, Pam and Russ Martin's charts strongly suggest stock market is propped up by invisible hand. And uh, I'm gonna click that real quick because this is something I said uh, a month ago uh, when the stock markets, you know, when we took that big 1100 point down in the Dow and all of a sudden it reversed itself almost instantly the same day. I believe that was the uh, PPT. And for someone, and this is by Pam and Russ Martin's Wall Street on Parade, uh, they wrote this and this is something I've been talking about for a month now. For someone who has watched trading screens for 36 years, uh, boy, that's like me with gold and silver. It's pretty easy to spot a fake market. <laughs> As the charts below indicated, there's an invisible hand or hands pushing the stock market up when it should be plunging. The likely suspects are the U.S. Treasury, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen's plunge protection team. Folks, I said this a month ago before even people were starting to talk about it. Uh, boy, I must have some insight on something here. Uh, but again, you watch markets for years and years and years, you can spot this stuff. And I think a lot of people are, are, are wondering why this market hasn't, you know, why the, the Dow Jones and why the uh, S&P and why NASDAQ hasn't taken a giant shit overnight. Uh, again, that's because I believe, and a lot of people smarter than me apparently believe, that uh, smarter than me when it comes to this kind of stuff, like Pam and Russ Martins, 
believe now that the plunge protection team known as the stabilization fund uh, foreign central banks that are aligned with the U.S. position on Ukraine want to help stabilize financial markets in the West. Hedge funds and Wall Street's dark pools owned by the mega banks that are net long or a combination of all the above. Interesting article. Uh, one thing's for sure, the stock market is not responding in a normal fashion to soaring inflation, a hawkish Fed, spiking interest rates, and military aggression by an out of control. Uh, this I would disagree. An out of control dictator with 6,000 nuclear warheads. Uh, I think Pam and Russ Martins are pretty stupid when it comes to international politics because if they don't understand that we created that war in Ukraine, the United States and EU, uh, not the Russians, that we created this. And again, I'm not justifying war. People that, uh, uh, people that like war and push for war suck, in my opinion. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, I've got not nice things to think about war hawks, so I have nothing good to say about war hawks. And, uh, but again, to say that Russia created this whole thing all by themselves, and, and look at the amazing amount of smart people that believe this. You can tell that with this statement. There's an amazing amount of people that know stuff, they're smart, but when it comes to international politics and understanding what's happening in Ukraine, they're totally fucking clueless. Uh, again, like Pam and Russ Martins by this comment, but it's, when it comes to stocks, they know what they're talking about, and I agree with them 100% that the uh, Russian invasion, not, not that, but the, uh, uh, avoid the Russian invasion, that's just bullshit excuses. Uh, really, we've got a collapsing stock market being held up by the plunge protection team. That's the point I agree with here. And uh, I've been talking about this for a while. Meanwhile, uh, and I'm not going to say I told you so, but yeah, I told you so. <laughs> so let's t uh, the charts. We looked at the charts already. We looked at the silver charts. We looked at the equities markets. Let's see what uh, here. What is, uh, looks like uh, NASDAQ is up. Wow, pretty good, too, 1%. Uh, gosh, and so is the gold market, too. It's kind of strange. Oil market's down. Don't tell me that market's not monkey hammered. There's your first drink, folks, uh, as well. Uh, Bitcoin woo, up a little bit too, just like the NASDAQ. Wow, what a coincidence. Uh, you know, I thought it was just the uh, Dow Jones, SP, and NASDAQ in general, but apparently it really does look like the uh, uh, Bitcoin is following NASDAQ, uh, uh, NASDAQ charts up and down with NASDAQ. And that makes sense. Think about it. People like Kathy Woods from the ARC Fund invested heavily in Bitcoin. So if Kathy Woods' ARC Fund goes down, uh, maybe that's not so good for uh, uh, Bitcoin either. I'm not quite sure how that works, but there is a, uh, a comparison there between the, the NASDAQ and Bitcoin in the last few months. Uh, let's take a look at another chart that we haven't talked too much about, but the, uh, uh, the misery index. Now, uh, you can look at the misery index for free. Close your eyes. I'm going to go up real quick and you might get motion sickness. There you go. Do it as quick as I can. It's called the United States Misery Index. It's free. You can read it yourself. Uh, how miserable do you feel? This is a real index, too, folks. I've been using it for years. Pretty accurate as well. Index by year, index by month, index by president, index by Congress. Uh, we're going to do this one right by misery index by month. And again, close your eyes. Um, gosh, here, where's Carter, by the way? Carter, you'll see Car the Carter era. I think we are reliving. See this era right here, Carter, towards the end of the Carter era, and Ford, who inherited that mess. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. What am I saying? Ford. There's Carter right there. There's the Carter inflationary period. My, uh, my, my apology. Ford inherited from uh, Nixon. Uh, and then there's Reagan. You start to see it go down. I mean, those were epic numbers. We were in the 17s and 19s. Look at that. Uh, that's, wow. Take a look at that. The misery index is 21.63 in 1980. Uh, in the fourth month, Jan uh, April of 1980. That's just crazy. Uh, however, uh, that chart kind of went down for the longest period of time, blew up uh, right here. Again, sorry if I'm making any of you dizzy, motion sickness, but here's where we blew up. Take a look at this. The last time, I mean, that chart went, and again, what happened? This, that was Critter 19. Critter 19 was 2020-04. And this completely misery index is a complete result of, uh, uh, of not Critter 19. I'm going to tell you why the misery index was so high. It wasn't the critter that caused it. It was the morons and boneheads across the globe called politicians and officials that created the misery index but it wasn't the critter 19 it was their reaction their stupid mandates that caused this uh, uh, misery index right here which continues today and what I wanted to point out in the misery index is look at this it's rising under the current administration here and you can see it was 11.48 and uh, last for January, February's numbers come in, 11.67. It's rising. When is the last time we had 11.67 um, that high? Well, it's pretty easy. We'll go back again to the Trump era. But 
it's pretty easy to see what caused that, all right? What caused the misery index to rise so high is, look, that blue section is called unemployment. That red section is called inflation, all right? We were in a high unemployment era because of what? Not because of the Critter 19, but because of our moronic morons in Washington, D.C., Europe, and across the world. The politicians, the officials that created the mess. It wasn't 19, it wasn't Critter 19 that created the mess. Don't ever mistake in that. It was their moronic responses, their moronic mandates that created the mess. But I digress. There's your second, third drink or whatever. So uh, there we go right there, 15. Uh, our index was just right off the hook because of unemployment. But you can see unemployment starts to go down here even under the uh, current administration. But there is the ugly head of inflation rising its head. The last time we saw 11.67 was during the critter. Uh, and again, that looked like the sixth month. What was that? Uh, uh, June or July. Yeah, it looks like June, uh, May, June. Yep, there you go. June, uh, it started to decrease and it looks like the inflation starts uh, <clears throat> heading up. But let's look here for a big red line. Do you see any big red lines here? No, you really don't until you get back into uh, uh, here where you see major inflation under Bush. Uh, but you don't see that huge, huge red line comparative to the uh, uh, unemployment blue line there until you get back into who, folks? Well, here you go, until you get back into Mr. Carter. Take a look at this. Well, if history repeats itself, here we go again, folks. We're going to be looking at these numbers. And what month of the presidency was Carter in? Uh, uh, similar to what we're in, ooh, Carter just kind of got into that all on his own, inherited that mess as well. And let's see here, inflation. Uh, right, God, look at the inflation under Ford as well. That's just insane. Uh, but he, folks, we're heading back to this 1970s style inflation. And a lot of folks will blame the inflationary period on Carter. Carter only exasperated it and made it worse because of his policies. Um, but the inflation really was caused by we got off the gold standard, man. Take a look at this. It just gets worse and worse. Gold standard, gold standard, gold standard, non-gold standard, non-gold standard. And it just got worse from here. And there we go. Well, uh, take a deep breath there. Another sip of coffee and some humming for you. Mm -hmm. uh, dead space and a loud bang in your ear. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to go over to the shortage of silver. And we'll talk about gold. Um, silver, folks. Remember, where gold goes, silver will go. And right now, we are in a fiat-driven world where gold should be right through the roof, and it will be for, you know, this black swan event, or I guess you could call it a black swan event. It was actually planned by many people, but uh, uh, the events that we have going on right now uh, with war and everything like that uh, are going to cause the price of gold to dramatically raise, uh, rise up. This is not helpful, and it's not even the war itself. It's the cutting off of resources out of that part of the world. You know, once you cut the res once you cut the oil off and all the resources that a rich Russia owns, Russia is very rich, folks, rich in resources, um, and uh, rich in resources that they can use and resell. So they're not as bad off as people are saying they are. I mean, they got some sanctions, they got some issues, but they got resources, and that's more than you can say for a lot of countries. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that, but uh, <laughs> let's move into silver again. Uh, hey, Lynn, premiums have gotten no better, man. In fact, the premiums are even higher than they were. Look at this, JM Bullion, the 800-pound gorilla of all the uh, uh, online resellers. Um, here comes my shameless plug for marketing. By the way, I advertise to beat Atmex, JM, and SD Bullion for my local customers here in South Florida. Come to visit us between 10 and 4 Mondays and Fridays <laughs> for the best deal. We even beat the online big guys, okay? Um, all right, I got my marketing out of the way. Oh, hey, caveat, we don't, we don't do mail orders, so if you don't live in my area uh, and you don't live in South Florida and you can't come and see us, please find yourself a local dealer. And when I talk about JM, SD, and Atmax, I'm not saying they're bad dealers. They're big 800-pound, JM is especially, but they're the, uh, the bigger dealers out there. And uh, I, I encourage you not to buy online, not because they're bad companies, but keep that money local. Keep that money in your state at the very least, even if you have to drive an hour, uh, instead of shipping it out of your state where you'll never see it again. Remember, your local dealer spends it locally as well. If you own a hardware store, chances are he'll be spending it over there. Uh, you get my point, I hope. And again, your local dealer should be able to beat the online dealers like we do. And we do. We do. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, again, premiums are just nuts, folks. Or I don't even uh, I am even uncomfortable selling generics at these levels. But if you want silver, you're stuck. That's it. That's the only way we can buy it. Best deals are still hundred ounce bars. But look at the premium on hundred ounce bars. Oh my God! Look at that. That's just insane. Uh, let's take a look here. Holy crap! Look. At, that's almost a four dollar plus premium on hundred ounce bars. Used to be my what? Not used to be. Was my favorite product recently? Not my favorite product. I'd rather sell you Eagles and stuff, but the premiums are crazy. But it was the least expensive of a recognizable industry product that you could buy. And now the prices are just something is going on here, man. Um, and it's not clear. <laughs> I keep going back to the that song. Sorry about that. Something's happening here, and what it is isn't exactly clear. But it is clear, folks. Ted Butler pointed out, I think the industrial uh, users are buying up all the silver. The price point's not an issue for them. Not closing the doors is the issue. So right now, I believe in industry, uh, as far as silver goes, is currently fighting with investment silver demand. And uh, uh, that is causing the uh, dog, which is physical, to wag the tail finally, tail being the paper markets. Um, so I believe that after decades and decades and decades, the dog is starting to wag the tail, folks. The big change is coming up here. I really believe that based on this price and the strength that I'm seeing in silver. We're not seeing the smackdowns. I have a feeling we're taking off to new levels here, and it won't be too long from now. But let's see what happens. Again, never underestimate people that have endless money and uh, uh, have the casino, Crimex, Comex, working for them. Uh, ZH, let's take a look. Politics, and boy, that sums it up. What a fucking mess out there. Oh, I said the F word. Sorry about that. There's another drink. Uh, and uh, uh, let's see. Look, look, look at what our useless uh, uh, politicians do, right? What does that do? You know, if we were smart, we'd go in the UK, e the US, the EU, all these idiot countries, including our own. Well, we're not an idiot country. We just have idiots running the country, all right? Uh, would go in and make peace with Russia and say, hey, listen, this is ridiculous. Let's just stop this. We won't put um, borders, uh, missiles on your borders. Let's just get back to being cool with each other, making money and having peace and whatever it is that you want to do, all right? No, no. We throw gasoline on the fire. We throw more weapons down there. What the flying F do these politicians in Europe and the United States, where are their heads? Well, I tell you where their heads up, squarely up their freaking asses. Uh, I got to get out of here because I can really go off on these idiots. Um, Look, U.S. reportedly agrees to home 100,000. I mean, that's kind of cool, except the situation is we're creating it and making it worse. We create the situation. Uh, and, and really, look who they're going to bring over here. And I'm cool with that, uh, protecting anybody. But is there going to be a, uh, uh, does LGBTQ going to get a preference over other people? Uh, again, shows you the lunacy of our officials worldwide. And, and again, uh, before I point out other lunacies in the EU and, and across the world, I point out the uh, plank in our own eyes, our own government, the U.S. government. Again, I love my country. I love the land. I love our people, even people I disagree with. But as far as our elected officials and the officials we have running this country, they're for shit. They're for shit. That's it. Uh, very, about a handful of blue people and red people I respect in either parties. And you know my opinion, the two-party system has to go. We need to get into a third party, fourth party, at least to keep those two fuckers honest. Oh, gosh. All right, see what happens when I talk about politics? <laughs> All right, um, let me just see if there's anything here that has a direct relationship on the price of gold or silver. Any interesting articles by uh, uh, Peter Schiff, um, Ted Cruz. There he goes, Jesus. You know. I uh, can't stand any of these people. I really can't. Very few. Uh, this guy's a complete moron right here as well, in my opinion. In my opinion, of course. Um, all right. I better stop and uh, because otherwise I'm going to just uh, go off here. Plus, we got video to talk about. Yesterday's video, and I got comments I should answer, too. Well, take a sip of coffee here. One sec. Mm-hmm. Ex-Marine says, yes, CBDCs are evil, but not a total loss of freedom. They can't stop barter, and that's what smart people. Uh, but the problem, Ex-Marine, is we get to barter. That's dystopian, man. That's going to be a dystopian society where you're going to have to go out and try to barter silver for a chicken or something like that. Uh, that's Kevin Costner's postman world, man. That's, uh, uh, I don't see that happening. I just, again, I just see them creating endless fiat currencies and then trying to force us into these CBDCs. 
And my whole point of yesterday's video and even today in the future is going to be reject them. Reject them with every, violently reject them. And I don't mean like violently, like, you know, go beat someone up. I mean just in your actions, just do, reject them totally. Uh, reject CBDCs in every way, shape, or form. If you hear someone talk about them, smack them down. I don't mean like, you know, physically smack them and hurt them. I mean just smack down that idea. Uh, let them know what morons and idiots they are. If you can't first explain it to them, then if they don't get it, smack them down, all right? Because CBDCs are the end of our society, the end of our freedom, the beginning of a, uh, 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 what do you call it? What, what does uh, China do with their uh, social uh, uh, credit system? Yeah, that's exactly where it's going to be because if you don't agree with one, one party or the other and they deem what you say un you know, they don't like what you say or what you do, there goes your bank account, there goes all your money that'll be in CBDCs. So folks, you, you, we need to reject this with every, every bone in our body. Every, every piece of us need to reject this. I don't even know what to say there. So uh, you're welcome, G, nice to see you posting. Akisha, uh, silver currently has a base of 25 that re it revolves around. Silver price action does not follow logic, absolutely true. And, uh, Let's see, the paper shorts and dust traders are in charge of price second. Yes, they're losing the battle. Yep, yep. Kind of all the stuff we're talking about. You know, Akisha, you and I agree on a lot of this stuff as well. So, uh, hey, thanks for commenting. And, uh, hey, all you folks that are, are still watching me right now, made it through the, this video up to this point, I encourage you to go in the comment section. A lot of smart people out here and a lot of people, uh, um, uh, like, you know, I, I learn even from my commenters. I like to talk to them and read them. And then remember, I read every one of them, even if I don't acknowledge you and I don't uh, uh, read every comment. I do read every one of them, folks. Uh, I can at least right now. If this video channel keeps getting bigger, I'm kind of going to be screwed. <laughs> I don't think I'll have the time to read them all. It's getting a little hard now. Uh, Silver Line, you know why fish are so smart? They hang out in schools. Yes, sir. That You're smart. <laughs> that was, that's pretty funny. Um, by, the, by the way, Monkey Hammer is out for repair. Yep. Can't argue with that. And... Uh, I appreciate the comment there, Silver Liner. Uh, like learning a new word, schlubbing is a good word. I, I'm using that instead of the word, the M word. I didn't say it, see? I'm trying to get you guys not too buzzed today. Uh, very good information. I would agree that people watch mainstream news are brainwashed. That is true. Uh, you get a 1099, I think, when you sell a ETF through your brokerage. I don't, there, you know, that, that's when you get a 1099. I think that's what I was referring to, Anthony. Thanks for watching. Um, $94 over spot for one ounce gold is not bad compared to 125 or 134 gold eagle, but I think that you should be able to pick up uh, uh, these things for closer to 90 or less, and I'm thinking more like 85 or less, but again, not a huge difference there, uh, and certainly better than spending 125 or 135 bucks over for a gold eagle. Um, currency, crypto, and lock and chain, they, yeah, yeah, can't argue with that with PGAM. And yeah, they did. They left Saddam hanging from a rope as soon as he said that they were, he was going to sell oil for uh, uh, gold. Uh, and whatever happened to Libya's gold? Remember, we talked about this yesterday. Ukraine's gold and Libya's gold. And if you want to hear an interest, read about an interesting story, type in Ukraine's gold. 33 tons of it. Stolen in 2016 by the United States. At least I think it was stolen. We don't know where it went still. Uh, maybe that's why we want Ukraine destroyed. <laughs> Wow, that's a conspiracy, folks. But if 1% of the craziest shit you heard in conspiracies were true, that would drop our jaws. Uh, yeah, I did Heart of Texas. Actually, I'm surprised it's still on YouTube channel. It's, I, 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 I have watched uh, uh, this right here, and if any of you folks are wondering, superb, superb, highly recommend it. I know it's on, uh, was it, uh, uh, Grumble or, oh man, I forgot to rumble. It's on Rumble. Um, I know you can find it on there if you just type in that word uh, right there by Oliver Stone. You can find it, but wow, excellent, excellent assessment, dead spot on as far as uh, what's happening in Ukraine. And any of you folks that are watching right now, I highly recommend you watch this for sure. Uh, just type that in. And I, again, I think it's on uh, YouTube's been removing the video, but I think it's on Grumble now. Uh, yep, absolutely heart of Texas. And let's see what we got going on. Governments will ban all. Yep, that's true. They will. And uh, yeah, gosh, man, why don't we get some real constitutionalists in there instead of people that pretend they follow the Constitution? Can't argue with that, Tim. Uh, Brexit. Yep, I believe that's true as well. And they want to get you hooked onto buying CBDCs, and they're going to hand it out to the poor first. That's for sure. That's uh, uh, Mark Hall. We have a lot in common. Yes. 
And uh, thank you, Blind Shiva. I appreciate that. I think we agree 100% on uh, digital currencies. And are you sure you're one overusing the term, uh, I'm not going to say it, M, <laughs> versus the players are overusing the function? No. Hey, that's a very good turnaround point that I never thought about it. They're just overusing the activity. So I'm trying not to use the word too much today. Uh, if we end up going to CBDCs, since you don't think that we'll be getting used in silver straight to, will we go to the uh, local coin store to get CBDCs to get digital needs? Uh, hopefully not in my lifetime. I will have uh, uh, helped fight the battle to uh, end CBDCs. So this is not going to happen because all of us are going to tell the governments, take your CBDCs and stick them up your ass. All right, That's what we need to tell them. And people that are for CBDCs, we've got to let them know what morons they are and why they're stupid thinking that. Uh, <laughs> boy, I said it, didn't I? Uh, agree, numismatic gold is a whole different ball game, fun to dabble in, but um, yep, uh, you're absolutely right there. Again, uh, I think what he's referring to is my comments on buying certified graded gold coins, which is absolutely stupid. The premiums are ridiculous. There's no read for you to, you know, people that push certified graded U.S. gold coins and even U.S. high premium gold coins. Uh, $20 gold pieces and stuff like that on customers as a hedge aren't doing them a favor. Uh, they're just making put more money in their pockets. Thanks, Tony Danzi. Appreciate you watching. Yes, sir, uh, Silver Loving Lou, there's something interesting. There's something going on out there for sure. And what it is isn't exactly clear. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. The, the snappers, let's see what the snappers look like right now. Can we still see them? There they are. Oh, I think we frightened them. Hang on, so we'll go back here. Yeah, I called them snackers yesterday, and it's probably snappers, but uh, <laughs> yeah, they are snacks. They're tasty little snacks. I think, uh, well, hey. Uh, yeah, I got hungry watching them too. And uh, no one can ever predict when precious metal will be in price for a couple days. Yeah, it's tough. Short term predictions are really tough in this market. Uh, however, I can see patterns, like that kid can see dead people. So, <laughs> and you remember the Bruce Willis movie. And uh, Poor Man's Investing, thank you for commenting. Guido as well. Um, of course, says morons, you are two kinds. These politicians on both sides of the aisles are sold out entitled uh, B Great Actors. Oh man, you got that right. I think uh, Oh Man is the best song and dance front man they ever bought. True for that, sir. Uh, yeah, gosh, man, we are on the same level. Uh, Chris says, um, my genius daughter told me to buy, but yeah, that would been that's when you would have been a billionaire, Chris. Damn it. But you want to hear something funny, Chris? I almost bought it at five dollars. I was going to spend two or three hundred dollars because I saw it in Wired magazine. So I went online. And this is when it first came out. When Bitcoin first came out, it was well, maybe not first, but when I looked at it, it was like five bucks for a Bitcoin. I said, oh, you know what? Just for the f of it, I'll buy two or three hundred dollars. I couldn't figure out how to do it back then. It was probably even more complicated, but I could not figure out how to do it. I spent an hour trying to figure it out, and I just gave up. And uh, that hour cost me my billions. <laughs> I don't want to Don't lament or regret anything, sir. Uh, just move ahead and learn from things. Uh, Wegapal, yep, that's true. Um, I'm disappointed to hear you mention elections. I expect someone like you would be well aware that elections. Uh, I better not say that, but uh, uh, I think where there's smoke, there's fire, and there was a lot of smoke in the last election. And we also know from past elections, we joke about voting twice in Chicago. This is not a new thing. So, yeah, I always think there's been uh, 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 issues with elections. I always thought that. Uh, and where there's smoke, there's fire. And there always has been. Uh, but as far as the last election, do I think there was big issues? Uh, I think there was certainly big smoke there. And, uh, yeah, more than likely. Uh, but let's move along from here. And uh, I think that's it. Oh, two Texas, Brian, they already do CBDCs, more or less, uh, and food stamps. And, and that is to my comment yesterday is that they're going to introduce CBDCs by giving them out. Instead of uh, sending out checks for now on, probably they're going to send Social Security payments to CBDCs. They're going to try. Uh, they're going to send it out. To, the first little experiment with the poor, like, uh, like EBTs, they'll give it out to the poor. They'll give it out to the unemployed people. Who will take it? Because they need money. What are they going to do? Say no. Um, but that's how they'll get it introduced. And then once the poor have it, they're going to want to spend it at local merchants. They're going to want their landlord to take it, and their landlord's probably going to be required to take it by law. Uh, so, folks, best I can tell you about CBDCs, government-issued cryptocurrencies, reject them, stay away from them. I don't care if they give them to you. Burn the fucking things. Oh, I said it again. Gosh, damn it. I really, sorry about that. I really do throw these out, not purposely. So <laughs> uh, some, some folks might think I just do this purposely. Well, uh, thanks for watching yesterday's video. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button as well, uh, if you still like me. <laughs> 
Hey, listen, this is Brian Kuzma. I'm going to close it up with uh, my meme and theme for the year, my lifetime theme, which is think for yourself and question authority. And this means even questioning what your own narrative it is. The, the thoughts in your head, your belief system, is it your own or is this something you were taught when you were young by schools, by your parents, by your, you know. Sometimes you need to go back and look at your even your own narrative, not just the narrative of others, not just questioning authority, but questioning yourself. And uh, I pushed it a little bit further than this theme right here uh, because I think once you start questioning yourself, others, and you always question and think for yourself and question authorities, you get to the point where you start to question yourself, and that's when the real learning takes place. Hey, that's it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Call me anytime between 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays at 954-493-8811. And again, we only deal locally if you don't live in my town, in my, in my area here in South Florida. Please find yourself a good local dealer and keep that money uh, in your town or at least in your state. Uh, I think we're going to wrap it up. That's it, folks. Hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.